Today on Law Weekly, we bring you some of the highlights from the interactive session between the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption and some representatives of civil society and the media. We also have highlights from the launch of the book Commercial Arbitration Law and Practice in Nigeria Through the Cases, a book written by the chairperson of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, Mrs. Doe Rhodes Vival. Plus our report on the interesting twist in the case against the judge of the Federal High Court, Justice Rita Ophelia Jubogobia, and Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Godwin Obla. That's the lineup. Hello and welcome. I am Shola Shuyedi. Let's begin straight away with the report from the interaction between some members of the civil society, the media and the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. On Tuesday, November 28, the committee shared with these stakeholders some of the work it has been doing for the past one year and its strategies and plans for the new year. Here's the report. Following recommendations in the draft National Anti-Corruption Action Plan, President Muhammad Buhari in August 2015 announced the setting up of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, chaired by Professor Ishe Sage, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Its terms of reference include the promotion of the reform agenda of government on the anti-corruption effort and the coordination and implementation of plans for all anti-corruption legislation and interventions. The work of the committee is supported by donor funds put together last year by three major donor organizations, notably MacArthur Foundation, the Ford Foundation, and the Open Society Foundations. These three foundations put together uh, $5 million, out of which $1 million is available for the work of civil society organizations. And the number of civil society organizations are not even aware of this, but you can go online, check the website of Trust Africa, and you can apply for funding uh, if you have any anti-corruption activity or initiative. The other important thing with the fund is that the fund itself is focused. So for those of us who are civil society organizations, which includes the media, the media is allowed to apply for the fund, for example, to do investigative journalism. This interaction specifically targets civil societies and the members of the media. And after a recap of some of its activities in the last one year, the executive secretary spoke about some of its plans and strategies for the new year. We develop sentencing guidelines for, the, for high profile corruption cases because we had seen situations in the past where politically exposed persons were arrested, tried, and the sentence was a slap on the wrist. They paid it off in the court, jumped into their vehicles, and drove off with their supporters clapping. Now the sentencing guidelines eliminate that from ever happening again. Then we have developed finally in this regard a framework for the management of recovered stolen assets. One of the criticisms of previous government had been that assets that were recovered were looted. I can guarantee you that it is not happening under this dispensation. Questions were put to the committee on various aspects of its work and the members took turns to solicit the support and cooperation of all stakeholders. They also gave suggestions to give more bite to the anti-corruption war. You talk about rule of law. What about rule of justice? And immediately they arrest one man who has stolen our money, you start saying, oh, rule of law, the man should not have been locked up. But if they were really serious, a lot of the people who are in prison should not be there if you are actually fighting for their human rights. So uh, I would just say that uh, on that one, we do need your help to educate the public about the differential between rule of law and rule of justice. And for you to know that in this country, if we do not start emphasizing the rule of justice on this matter of corruption that destroys us, we are not going to make any progress. I believe one of the things that we need to do as we work on institutionalizing anti-corruption is to have agencies of government take this on and put them through their system so they become procedures, they become guidelines, and it will take a lot of effort for you to dismantle those structures. 
Um, I have seen several, as I mentioned, within the um, organization I'm heading now, and I've also shared this with similar agencies who have realized that those exist. So it's important for the federal government to task agencies and task head of agencies to look into their operational guidelines and bring up areas that have been put in place to circumvent um, guidelines, to circumvent Public Procurement Act, for example, to circumvent all other guidelines that institute corruption. We need to do that across our agencies of government. For the chairman of a committee, the message is simple. The anti-graft war needs to be taken more personal. We can assume that this country has a collective pot containing our resources. Any person who is guilty of corruption is taking something out of that pot. That reduces what the rest of us have to share. So that, that's the message. Let it be personal to every Nigerian that any act of corruption constitutes an attack on that Nigerian and they should actually vehemently oppose it in their own way and support the struggle.